This episode of Scientific Tuesdays is brought to you by Netflix. Head over to netflix.com slash science for your free trial membership. The demonstrations you're about to see are completed by a professional and should never be attempted at home. Remember, safety's cool. Welcome to Scientific Tuesdays, everyone's favorite source for chemical mayhem. Now this week we're going to be taking a look at two magical chemicals. One of them is sulfur and the other is iron. Now on their own there isn't much to write home about, but when you combine the two, you get a reaction that'll go down in history. So let's start with sulfur. It's one of those crazy chemicals that we see all around us and never really recognize it. Let's put it this way, sulfur smells awful, but when harnessed correctly, it can be used for many things. Ever heard of sulfites? Well, sulfur is one of the many ions used to help create these. They preserve food. But that's not all. Sulfur is also used to create gunpowder, insecticides, and oh yeah, that's right, prescription drugs. Typically, it's not a very dangerous chemical, but it smells awful. So, you know, you, you probably want to wear a face mask. Now, what about iron, or rather, iron powder? Iron powder, which we have here, is essentially a ground down version of solid iron. Iron's one of those elements you can find everywhere as well. It's in the sun, cars, tools, it's even found in your body. Well, at least in some form. Iron's one of the most common materials you can find on the planet. But I digress. This isn't about that. This is about what happens when we combine it with other materials. So let's move on and find out what happens. Now hopefully you weren't blinded by all the schooling I just shoved into your brains. If you were, then let me recommend checking out the latest sparkly vampire movie. I'm sure that'll bring your brain back down a few notches. That being said, it's time to check out exactly what happens when these two chemicals collide. But first, we need a catalyst. Now just what is a catalyst, you might ask? Well, to put it simply, it's any substance or material that initiates a chemical reaction. For this demonstration, an iron rod will do just fine. However, there is one quick thing we need to get to first. I want to thank our sponsor this week, Netflix. Netflix has over 15 million members and it's the world's largest subscription service. It will instantly stream TV episodes, movies, all over the internet, or they'll send you a DVD. Once you're a member, you can select from a huge library of titles that you can watch instantly. There's also a vast array of titles on DVD. Now keep in mind, you don't need a computer to watch these. Among the many devices which work with Netflix are the Xbox 360, the PS3, even the Nintendo Wii. This will let you find all the movies and TV shows that you love easily. As a new member and a Scientific Tuesdays viewer, you can get a free trial membership right now. Just head over to netflix.com science and sign up. Be sure to use that URL so they know I sent you. Now to kick this off, I'm going to add eight grams of iron powder. Now there are better ways to measure these substances. However, uh, I'm going with the quick and easy method where I pull it straight out of the bottle and then remove the remnants with my fingers. Of course, I'm wearing gloves. We're close. Almost there. Boom. Eight grams. Excellent. Now, sulfur time. Now, sulfur kind of looks disgusting. If, I, if I'm going to be completely honest with you here, I mean, it's it's yellowy and smelly and, jeez, let's not even go any further than that. But anyway, I'm looking to add four grams here, and I'm a little bit off, so let's remove, there we go, 3.9, you know what, close enough. All right, so pouring this all into a mortar, and then I'm going to stir it up, mix it up, what have you, and, and we'll see what happens here. Now I'm gonna speed this up because this actually takes a long time. You wanna get a nice consistency where they're almost becoming one. There we go. All right, now next part. We're gonna heat up that rod until it's nice and red. Now this is gonna take a while, so again, gonna speed it up. In reality, this took probably about three minutes, but as you can see here, with the magic of time-lapse film, we can get there just under 30 seconds. The rod's nice and hot. Let's plunge it in. 
So now I'm going to take that rod and plunge it into the magnificent powder that I've created. And let's see what happens. When iron and sulfur react, they form one of the simplest compounds, iron sulfide. Of course, it's not really that simple. This is actually known as a non-stoichiometric reaction. When the sulfur and iron particles are hit with a catalyst, they form this amazing substance you see before you, iron sulfide. As you can see though, it bonded to the rod and I'm having a tough time breaking it off. But don't worry, with enough force, it will break off. That's a good thing, because I didn't want to have to buy a new one. So today we proved that sulfur has a better use than just stinking up your dorm room. When we mix it with other chemicals, magical things can happen. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Scientific Tuesdays, and if you did, be sure to tune in next time as we mix hydrogen with an egg. You might see that the results are a bit explosive. See you then. We get that cash, so please, we ate your average brands. We got those in the type of bangers, they can pull out your hat. Hey, yo.